with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired, for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy, and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Well, it's one I call Danger Wears Two Faces. It began when a friend of mine in South Texas asked me to help him get back a herd of rustled cattle. California and I took the trail ourselves, following the herd as it headed for the Mexican border through the Big Bend country, a land of border outlaws. And trailing a herd of stolen beef there was as healthy as playing patty cake with an unhappy mountain lion. We finally lost the trail in a rocky section, but pushed on in hopes of picking it up again. Uh, Hoppy, uh, do we keep going? Sure, why not? What'll we do if we find them? Take the herd back and turn the rustlers over to the law, of course. Oh, it was silly of me to ask. I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. I, <laughs> I, well, great cross-eyed copperheads. Look. What? Oh, a man lying in the road. I know this country would bring us trouble. Well, uh, time to go home. Oh, stop grumbling. Come on. That man may not be dead. Yeah, and his killers may be watching, too. Well, let's see. Take a look at him, California. I'll cover you. Sure, sure. Don't see no wound. Maybe it's sunstroke. I'll see if his heart's, uh... Hoppy, he's alive. <coughs> Certainly I'm alive. Ugh. My name's Jasper. Oh, maybe I can sell you some tinware. My name is Cassidy, and we don't need any tinware. I'm California Carlson. Howdy, howdy. Uh, like a new coffee pot, a frying pan, and perhaps... No, 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 no. We're traveling light. Uh, chasing rustlers. Chasing... Ooh. Uh, uh, take your orders for coffins? I know an undertaker. California was only fooling you, Jasper. We're just riders. Oh, well, if you're after Russell stock, you want either Duke Spengler or Little Jack Pargo. They, they run the two big gangs of Big Ben. Either way, i take the loss and go home if I were you. Hmm. Down here, danger wears two faces, huh? Who do you work for? Me? When I'm a tinware salesman. My mule's over there. With... Lift them hands, all of you. Hoppy, will you look? It's a grizzly wearing pants. And holding a gun. Do as he says. I ain't about to argue with him, gun or no gun. It's Lacey, Duke Spangler's pet killer. You hombre has got the wrong road. What makes you think so? This gun in my hand, for one thing. Good reason? Sure, that's a swell reason. If it ain't enough, I'll tell you. This is the Duke's road. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Now, who are you two? What's your business? Why? Well, it's like this. If I don't have no objections to your business, I may let you turn around and leave peaceably. And if you do have... <laughs> then I'll kill you both where you stand. Well, uh, in that case, uh, he's Smith and I'm Jones, and we're just a couple of wandering riders, uh, ain't we, Hoppy? Yeah. Let's go back, Cal. Uh... I mean, Smith. No, wait, wait, Lacey, don't let them fool you. Huh? They're lawmen chasing wrestlers. Kill them! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Danger Wears Two Faces. Trailing a herd of Russell cattle... Hoppy and California entered the outlaw-infested Big Bend country of West Texas. When a gunfighter named Lacey holds them up and demands to know their business, Hoppy and California pretend to be wandering riders, only to have Jasper, a tinware salesman, betray them to the threatening killer. They told me so, Lacey. The names are really Cassidy and Carlson. Uh, you dirty big mouth. Shut up. It should be worth 50 bucks, Lacey. Uh, now, you, you tell Duke to pay me 50, won't you? You see, I'm a good friend of his. Jasper, and, and... you make me sick. You'd sell Duke down the river just as quick as you did these two hombres. Did Duke give you orders to shoot anybody trailing the herd? Shoot you. <laughs> 
I'm going to give you a hand in finding it. Duke Spengler's turned honest, and he wants Big Ben cleaned up with killers like Little Jack Fargo and his gang. So Spengler is honest now. Yeah. He's even got him a ranch. Little Jack Fargo's men are the ones who hustle that herd you're after. Come on with me. I'll prove it to you. Well, there's the Rio Grande. There's the tracks of your herd. I reckon it's sold in Mexico by now, but... Uh-uh. Company's coming. Who are those men? <laughs> Little Jack Pargo and his straw bosses. If you can't pray, hang on to your gun butts. Hoppy, uh, look at the leader. He's no bigger than a minute. Macy, you're out of your territory. And who are you two? Strangers. Oh, the clever type. Maybe I ought to make you bleed a little. You're too proud, Pargo. Those men of yours won't keep me from getting you if you reach for that gun. What? You're bracing me? Me, little Jack Pargo? Call it that, I don't like being threatened. I don't like braggarts, especially little ones. There's an advantage in being little, mister. Yeah, I know. You can hide under smaller rocks. You make a smaller target. Hoppy, you. look out! Oh, oh, my arm! Hold it, all of you. Draw and Fargo gets it dead center. You... You heard him, man. Where's the herd you shoved across the river, Fargo? Sold. And what's it to you? The money, then. Where is it? Throw down your saddlebag. No! You really want to make that choice? It, no, no, wait. All right. You win for now. You are the men. Toss your guns down easy. You pay for this, stranger. If it takes every man I've got, I'll see that you never leave Texas alive. I'll tell Duke you're here, Cassidy. You wait. Uh, Hoppy, why ain't we running now we get the money? Well, if we run, Pargo's men will catch us sooner or later. Huh? Then uh, what are we going to do? Lacey said Duke Spengler was trying to go on us. That he wanted Big Ben cleaned up. Well, if he'll help, maybe we can rid Texas a little Jack Pargo for good. Well, well, well. I'm Duke Spengler. Lacey tells me you outgrew, outshot, outtalked, and outbluffed little Jack Pargo and his toughest men. Why didn't you wait for your posse? Sorry, no posse. They're just the two of us. Just, just the two of you? Yeah, I was hoping you'd lend a hand in fighting, Pargo. <laughs> oh, my, this is priceless. You see, I was hoping your posse would do the same thing. This is quite a pickle you've gotten me into. Quite. You're supposedly as big as Pargo. Why do you need a posse? Ah, but I'm only supposedly as big. You see, my friends, when I turned honest, I dismissed most of my old fighters. As a rancher, I have no need of thieves and gun hawks. But you do need to be rid of little Jack Pargo. If you're honest, uh, that is. Ah, uh, 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 nasty, nasty tone. Please don't use it. I can assure you I'm only a cattle raiser. Though at the moment, I wish I did have a few of my old comrades. After seeing Lacey, Pargo will think I'm backing you. Then you'll have to... Shh, 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 shh. I must think it over. Join me at tea and I'll give you my decision. Tea. <clears throat> Hoppy, I, I can't balance this little cup. <laughs> You'd better. The Duke may get mad. And don't let his manner fool you. Those white hands of his can handle a gun as well as a teacup. You know, that helps me a lot. <laughs> Drop my good cup and they bury you tomorrow, old fellow. Uh, crumpet? Scone? Oh, uh, 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 maybe one of them little cakes, I'll... Crumpet. Uh, no, this cake will do fine. Uh, thanks. Decided what to do, Spangler? Well, as I see it, the situation is essentially simple. Big Ben has only one bandit gang to get rid of now. Sooner or later, the law will do it. Uh, did you notice my men riding in? Yeah, about 20 or so. All cowboys, not gunslingers, and busy with roundup and calf branding. 
hardly equal to Pargo's bunch, you know. Then how is it Pargo doesn't steal from you? A Pargo still thinks I am a bandit chief. He believes my ranch is only a cover and that I have the army I used to have. My past reputation stands me in good stead now. But not us, I think. Oh, uh, sad but true. Now then, you will take the gold you stole from Pargo and be off the ranch by dark. I'm throwing you to the wolves. Another trumpet. <laughs> Still, Dern, I'll be saddled in just a minute. Well, not leaving with the gold, I hope. Uh, uh, oh, uh, well, well, say, 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 uh, go someplace besides this barn, will you? Don't let my looks bother you. All I want is the gold. Hoppy wouldn't like that. Where is he? Tell me or I'll blast you. Well, well, well uh, he was over at the bunkhouse, but now he's right behind you. Uh, what? Yes. You're bluffing. No, he isn't. Drop your gun before I shoot some of the meanness out of you, big fella. No. You wouldn't dare shoot me here. You could... <laughs> that ain't nice. You want another? <laughs> Stop that. Oh, come on, mister. Fall. Well, getting tired? Whee! What a thick head. I'll bet your fist is busted, but huh, he'll sleep a while. Yeah. Uh, let's get her going. Put your hands up, both of you. That's That's the... Who? Uh... Say, weren't you with Pargo this morning? Forget the questions. Just drop your guns and pack those saddlebags out to my horse. Walk with him, Whiskers. You taking us to Pargo? No. He wants you out of the country. Fast. You know, if I yell, Duke's men would get you. Mm-hmm, and if I start playing corpse, I'm going to have company. That uh, was just a thought. Keep it that way. Now, there's my horse. Put the bags on him. Yeah. Oh. Ah. There. All right. Now, stand back. And play it careful. It wasn't your gold anyway. Adios. I was getting a hunch it wasn't. Oh, uh, what's that? Uh, you mean that... Uh... Hey, hey, hey. Who was that rider? What tricks are you two pulling? Jasper, you sure get around for a tinware salesman. If I were you, I'd stay out of my sight before I remember the way you betrayed us this morning. You understand? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I, I was just asking, and no offense. I, I, I'm sorry about this morning. <laughs> Excuse me. Hoppy, let's hightail it. We will. Right back to the river. Right back to the... Oh, no. That's Fargo's territory. We got some investigating to do. We'll take a detour and come up along the riverbank, but slow. I want to check for tracks. Come on. Hoppy, we've checked five miles of riverbank. Ain't that enough? Almost. Even in this moonlight, we wouldn't have missed the tracks of a big herd of cattle. Well, those tracks we saw this morning are the only ones around. It was our herd. Ain't no question about that. Maybe. There's one thing that's bothered me. I... What? What's that? Where? Moonlight on rifle barrels. It's an ambush. Ride for the river. <laughs> My horse is hurt. Uh, you go on. Too late. It's Pargo's men. We're surrounded. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Danger Wears Two Faces. After discovering that the rustled herd he was trailing had been sold in Mexico, Hoppy took the gold payment from little Jack Pargo, who admitted selling the herd. But later, one of Pargo's men stole the gold back. Then, as Hoppy and California investigate further, they are captured by Pargo's men in an ambush. Now... In a shack in Pargo's camp. <laughs> you didn't get very far, did you, Cassidy? And that's because I was too smart. I sneaked close enough to hear them say where they were going, Pargo. <laughs> I, I got them for you. You'll be paid for it, sneak. Now beat it. Well, they, they, they ought to be worth a hundred dollars. You, you know, you, you wanted them very bad. I never wanted anything so bad in my life. But get out of here, Jasper. You even smell like a traitor. Oh, sure, little Jack. Sure, I'm going. I, I just wanted you to know how good a friend I am. You know, I, I, I can help you a lot. Hmm. 
That unwashed louse. Now for you two. You're going to hate me worse than death. Poppy, does she mean that... Yeah, I broke his pride. Only a big man can take that. Why, you... No. No, not yet. First, where's my gold? No, act stupid. I suppose you don't know California, that... don't say any more. That gold is our insurance. Ex- oh! Take your own advice. Whiskers, where's the gold? Gold? Uh, what gold? So, all right, I'll give you some time to think. But one way or the other, you'll tell me. Harpy, how soon do you think he'll be back? Soon enough. Hope the man who took the gold from us comes first, though. Huh? I think he and Lacey were both acting on their own. Well, if Fargo finds out that one of his men took the gold, he'll sure kill him. Well, that's why the thief will have to help us escape. Keep us from talking to Fargo. <laughs> Speaking of the boogeyman... Quiet. Uh, I've come to help you escape. So we guessed. You can start on these ropes. My name is Brandon. You know why I had to take that money? You tell us. Well... That was the payoff for several herds, all of which Pago lumped together and ran across the Rio Grande. I thought those herds all came from my territory, but, well, I may be wrong. Your territory? Say, what are you, a range detective? That's a pretty good guess. Yeah, I'm with the Cattlemen's Association, working out of San Antonio. Pago's hit the ranches around there pretty hard. I guess he can sell as many cattle as he can steal. Sure. Ten dollars a head across the Rio Grande. No questions asked. Now, if you're square and part of that money belongs to you, you can claim it from our office. There. Yeah, now you're both free. Thanks. Come on, Hoppy. Let's get out of here. Why? 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 Just stay alive, that's why. <laughs> I hate to run from crooks. Let's take Fargo and his men. Why, you're insane. Beat it while you have a chance. Oh, give up, Brandon. When Hoppy gets like this, he's a worry to his friends and a delight to undertake. How many men does Pargo have here in camp with him? Fourteen. His lieutenants are the toughest outlaws in Texas. Well, they think you're one of them. Will you get them to come in here one at a time? Well, yes, I, I guess so. But, man, even if we can take them all, we'll never get out of Big Ben with them. Why, Pargo's men are... Who wants to get out of Big Ben? Look, get us rope, lots of it, and a couple of guns, or clubs will do. A pair of coffins would be more in order. Yeah, all right. As soon as we get the ropes cut into short length, we'll be ready. You wait until we've taken Pargo. He's coming back any time now. Once we have him, you can tell the others that he wants them here. Check. It ought to be a breeze. <laughs> yeah, a breeze. Now listen, this is what we'll do. Brandon, you call the men in here one by one. California, as they walk in the door... All right, California, ready? Here comes another. Get him! I got you! I got you, you darn rascal! (laughs) Number 13. Uh, You know, this is getting monotonous. I'm glad there's only one more. My arm's tired. Go on, get him tied up. Sure, sure. By now, I'm a darned expert. <laughs> well, I got the last one outside. He was suspicious, so I poleaxed him a little. Oh, well, I got to hand it to you. It worked. Yeah, so far. Only now what? We can't stay here long. And if we ride towards town, some of Pago's other men will spot us sure. You can get to town all right alone. California and I'll take the prisoners over to Duke Spangler's ranch. We can make it that far, and Pargo's men won't dare search there. If Spengler finds you, he'll massacre the lot. You're a loco. Wait. (laughs) Hang on to your hat, detective. I got an idea. Why don't we make it a clean sweep with both Pargo and Spengler? Oh, no. Can you round up some honest men in town for a posse? I can get you 50. All deathly afraid of Pargo and Spengler. Bring them to Spengler's place as quick as you can. Maybe when they see Spengler, Pargo, and their henchmen tied and helpless, they'll... They'll drop dead. Or they'll find courage enough to wipe out lawlessness and Big Ben. Without their leaders, these outlaws will be easy to lick. True, but you'll need an army to take Duke Spengler. But I have one. I got 15 prisoners. They'll be my army. Crazy, loco, just plain nuts. Hoppy, these prisoners ain't gonna be no help. They'd better be, or none of us will see morning. You're crazy if you think I'll help. If you help, Fargo, you get a fair trial. 
Don't, and Duke Spengler will catch us all. What'll your chances be with him? Hmm? Oh, but you, you wouldn't do that. Why, he'd kill me in cold blood. I was sure I could count on your cooperation. Pull up. There's a light in the ranch house, Hoppy. Duke's still up. It's the bunkhouse we have to take first. Now, listen close, Pargo. You're in on this. The prisoners stay tied. But I'll pack them down one at a time and lay them in a circle around the ranch house. What about them empty rifles you loaded in that extra horse? I'll put one of them in each prisoner's arm. In the dark, Duke's men won't know they're tied up. The moonlight will shine off the gun barrels. Pargo's untied and goes with us. With an empty rifle, I'll bet. Just more bluff. Only when we take the bunkhouse. When we hit the ranch house, Pargo will carry loaded guns with us behind him. We may need him to fight as well as bluff. That's great. You know, Hoppy, there's times when I wish I'd taken up hog raising like my pappy wanted me to. <laughs> well, taking the bunkhouse was easy enough. Sure, um, eight men were sleeping, but uh, where's the rest? Well, six or eight of them should be night riding or at line camp. The rest will be in that ranch house with Duke and Lacey. So now we try our bluff out on all of them. Yeah, we got Pargo's men all moved to circle the ranch house. Pargo, here's your gun. Hold them down at your side until we crash in the front door. I'll cover you till then. Try to lift the guns and... I get the picture. Let's get on with it. Hoppy, we can see from here. Through that window. Duke and Lacey, four men with them. Uh-huh. You take that side window, California. You'll take the front door. And good luck. Sure. Good luck to you. You won't need it. Just what if this stupid bluff don't work? Then we're in for one whale of a fight, Pargo. Quiet and try the door. It's unlocked. Shall we go in? Let's. You drink up, gentlemen. Toast to being honest. Raise him, Duke! Don't move! I'll drill the man who wiggles your finger. Guns in the middle of the floor, all of you. Here, what is all this? Don't be stubborn, Duke. My men have your house surrounded. Toss the guns down and don't forget the one in your vest pocket. My, my, my. This is a predicament. And there's a wrong note somewhere. Ah, yes. This can't be your play, Pargo. You'd have blasted us from the windows and talked later. Take a look out the windows if you don't believe us. Oh, I don't, my friend. I don't. All right, then. You throw those guns down or do you die because Duke is playing tough? No, you fools, wait! Don't! Yeah. Well, I see I must pay for my past sins after all. And your present ones, Duke. Lacey, your guns. I'll stick by Duke. Seems we have no choice, Lacey. That's the way it looks, Duke. Duke, they're trying to bluff you. There's men outside of Gotcha, you little weasel. Watch it, Hoppy. Oh, You're mine, Cargo. Oh, Back to the Cargo. Make them pay. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, we've rounded up all the prisoners, Cassidy. What a scrap that must have been. Duke, Pargo, Jasper, and Lacey are done for. Huh, that Lacey. It took two gun loads to make him cash. Ah, they'd have stretched rope anyhow. Duke was still a rustler. Oh, but that couldn't be. Only Pargo's been crossing the Rio. Duke had a better scheme than selling rustled cattle in Mexico for $10 a head. The way I figured, he organized this ranch so he could hold the herds, change the brands, and then later send them to Abilene or Dodge. Say, he'd get three times the price in Abilene. And he could play it honest. Duke knew sooner or later the law would wipe out the bandits of Big Ben. Hoppy, you think our herds in Duke's ranch there now? Yeah, he tried to steer us on Pargo a little too forcefully. Besides, his cowboys were all carrying straight rods of iron when they came in. Running irons. That was a giveaway. They were changing brands. Well, sure. No honest rancher would use running irons. They're too slow. They always have irons with their brand fixed on the end. Instead of drawing the brand, all the cowboy has to do is stamp it on the hide of the cow. That's right. Well, this should end Big Ben's outlaws. <laughs> I'll say. Now, you inspired the honest folks here. 
By tomorrow, there'll be a hundred men combing the brakes for crooks. Ah, uh, that sounds like action. Maybe California and I could help... What's that? Where... Hoppy, doggone it. If you get me into one more fight, I'm, I'm going to call off our partnership and do something peaceful. I'll, uh, I'll take up uh, hog raising. <laughs> uh, you know, like my pappy wanted me to. Peaceful? Yeah. I'll bet you couldn't take it. Go on, call a hog. Sure, sure. Heep, piggy, shoot. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> Good gravy, you're right. Lead me to that fighting, Hoppy. I sure can't stand to hear myself do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hoppy and California really had a scrap on their hands that time. And so ends Danger Wears Two Faces. In their next adventure, Hoppy easily proves that crooks are fools. And it's a story you won't want to miss. It's called California or Bust. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., Danger Wears Two Faces was written by Herb Purdom with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.